Hey, hello. You're stuck in traffic with Wolf Gorlick, a couple minute riff on IT and IT security. Today, looking at real time application security protection web application firewalls. So, your code has a problem. <laughs> I hate to be the one to tell you. Um, someone had to tell you, right? So, you need to hear from this from someone. All our codes has problems. There's always a vulnerability. Someone's always written something that uh, allows the bad guys in. We know this, we find this. We find this with tools like uh, static analysis testing or dynamic application security testing, right? We find this and then what do we do? So tip for you, make sure your static analysis and dynamic analysis tools integrate in with web application firewalls or with real-time application security protection. So real-time application security protection is RASP. Uh, web application firewalls is WAFs. So let's talk about RASPs and WAFs. WAFs sit in front of the web server and they process requests coming in and, uh, and they look for attack patterns and when they see attack patterns, they stop it, okay? RASP is a little bit different. RASP is an application security uh, tool that sits in the HTTP stack of the server. So whereas a WAF is in front of the server, a WASP is on the server with an HTTP stack. With RASP, generally, you can do it anyway, right? There's overlap, but in general, what you're doing with RASP is you are taking output from static analysis and you're creating virtual patches. So WAF, you say, hey, look for all the bad stuff and stop the bad stuff. With RASP, you say, here's bad stuff, stop that, <laughs> right? It's sort of like the difference between blacklisting, right? And whitelisting with respect to uh, a lot of these static analysis tools, you do the analysis, you say, hey, here's a uh, page with SQL injection. Hey, here's what the SQL injection will look like. Hey, give me an output, click a button for my RASP. You load that into your RASP, and then your RASP looks for that type of attack as it goes on through your stack. Uh, generally, those types of uh, attacks and the protections I've seen are uh, in integrated languages. What that means is something like .NET or Java. Um, it means that, uh, the, again, it sits right within the app stack. And then, once you have it in place, you've basically been immunized against that particular attack. And don't start and think, well, good, we're safe. <laughs> we don't need to fix the problem. We got a WAF and we got a RASP. Nope. <laughs> now that you've got the problem identified, what you basically do with these tools is you buy your developers time. So instead of them having to uh, code that fix in a hurry, knowing that they're vulnerable. They can code that fix on their own dev cycle uh, and upload a real patch at a point in time later on, knowing that they've mitigated the risk with this real-time application security protection and with the web application firewall. So, coders make code. You static analyze the code. You run through the application dynamically. You find problems. SAST and DAST exports out a thing. You plug that thing into your WAF. You plug that thing into your RASP. Web attacks come in. The WAF will block it. Bad requests come into the pages. The RASP will, will stop it on the stack. And, and between those two, that buys you enough time in the background to fix the problem, whereby removing those rules and having a clean app. Take magic. <laughs> and that's what I got for you there. Have a good one.